Some people say not to overanalyze your surfing. They tell us to get in the water as much as you can and will magically improve. However, this does not work for me. Instead, I use the hyper analyzation process of surfing with a goal in mind, filming the process, analyzing the footage to see what I'm doing wrong, and implementing the proper changes during the next session. I've improved more in the last two years using this process than in my whole surfing career, and this vlog is no different. Today I worked on weight distribution during the board setup, which we'll discuss, and I'll analyze some other interesting things I found after reviewing the footage. Due to a prolonged flat spell, this is my first time filming a regular vlog in over a month. However, I did get a few sessions in. I got to catch a few waves right before I shot the Shawshank Redemption reenactment. I was also visited by Doug and his son Dashi from Long Island, and we were able to get a quick session in. Dashi is a nine-year-old who surfs through the winter on Long Island. Dashi, I'm thoroughly impressed. And finally, we got to film on this day where it was just so foggy that minutes after the drone took off, the lens was covered in water. Through all these sessions, I was testing out a bunch of different things, and what I found is when I focused on keeping my weight forward through all aspects of the wave, I had better results overall. All right, I am back to the original spot I checked because I've, I've surfed here many times before and about an hour after high tide, this spot typically really works well. So I think I'm just gonna go for it. I didn't really find anything better. So, all right, it's official, I'm going out there. It still is not 100% working, but I'm planning on it starting to work very soon. <laughs> What I'm gonna to try to do is focus my weight to the front foot, which I have tried in the past, but this time I'm gonna really focus front foot weight. Everything, everything I do, I'm going to do in a forward manner, meaning I'm gonna make sure I'm looking forward, my upper body is forward yet still upright, which is the hard part. It's gonna free my back foot up to where I can put it wherever I want on the back of the board. And when it's set, that's when I dip back into my back foot and hopefully, turn very well, set the board up very well, but it is yet to be seen. <laughs> All right, we are just about ready to get out there. I caught a couple friends coming today, waiting for the cameraman, and I am so excited. Please enjoy the edit. Luckily, my prediction was correct, and as the tide dropped, the waves quickly improved. These ended up being extremely fun. Been a while since shooting a regular vlog my first five to six waves i completely forgot what i came here to do but i quickly knocked myself back into gear and i finally started focusing weight forward number one focusing on weight forward really seems to help me with all aspects of longboarding it makes the setup easier, it makes cross-stepping more stable, it keeps the rail locked in the wave, but my favorite part about it is it's an easy thing to think about and execute. Other more technical things like the size of your steps or foot placement are much harder to actually perform in the water. Keeping weight on your front foot is simple, and I like simple. Here's me taking a tiny inside wave because I'm impatient, all while a killer wave was coming right behind it. What else is new? Reviewing all the footage from this session, one key takeaway is I'm obviously not keeping my weight forward on lefts. As you can see, I'm leaning back on just about every one. Cross stepping on frontside waves has been my nemesis, and now I'm thinking it's simply because I'm just leaning back too much. Hopefully next session I catch more lefts and see if weight forward helps. probably my longest nose ride of the day, but boy, was it ugly. This leads me into the question of maneuverability while nose riding. Before I was able to nose ride, I always wondered if you were able to turn while on the nose. 
Although not the most graceful wave, check out how much I'm able to turn up and down the wave depending on where I put my back foot. About here, I noticed I was dropping down the wave, so all I did was took my back foot, put it on the inside rail, and I start going back up the wave. Then I realized I'm too high, so I took my back foot, put it on the outside rail, and you could see I started going down the wave a little bit. It just goes to show you how you can really elongate your nose rides if you learn to move that back foot depending on what the wave is calling for. So between focusing my weight forward and everything that I learned in this video, my confidence has grown so much in the last few months. If you're someone who's trying to become a nose rider, watching both of these videos together will jumpstart the whole process. So hopefully everyone's been getting some good surf lately. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.